I Bought a Wife Online, Part 3. Written by XX Kikito XX. As some of you may know, I brought a wife online not too long ago. It started off as a joke, but it's not so funny now. You can find parts one and two in the playlist in the card. Anyway, in the few weeks following my wife's birth, creation, spawning, I'm not sure what to call it exactly, she became the perfect wife. There were, of course, minor glitches, for example. As I mentioned before, she had to learn how to speak in a natural manner. Next came behavior. Small things, such as blinking occasionally, rather than burning holes into people's souls, with an unintentional death stare, or fluttering her eyelids like she was having a seizure when people greeted her. We also had fun learning about simple movement mechanics, like reflexes. For her, moving aside when objects were inbound for impact wasn't a consideration. And yes, it was a little awkward explaining to the kids next door why my wife stood motionless as their stray football smacked her square in the face. It turned out okay though, as they just thought that she was super metal. In the general public, I found that she blended in quite well and I could play off most of her strangeness as a horrific sense of humor. Though I still don't trust her to shop alone, the first day that I had taken her to the supermarkets, I asked her to grab some cheese while I got bread. I came back to a cart overflowing with cheese and empty refrigerated shelves. She also tended to ask if we needed whatever item she spotted on the shelves as she was already loading several of them into the cart. No, sweetie, we don't need four can openers, was a regular conversation we had. Though, when she answered me once with a sly smile saying, aren't I always supposed to be right? I had doubts as to whether or not she was really actually joking with me or not. In terms of homey things, again, I don't mean to sound like a jerk here. She was great. In fact, she did more than I expected her to. She kept records for me of important dates and bill payments. It was sort of like having a secretary, I suppose. The house was perfectly clean. Breakfast was made by the time I got out of the shower every morning. Lunch prepared and packed before I went to work. And dinner was on the table when I came home. Her meals were wonderful. The first few were a little charged, sure. So a few cooking shows later and she was a master chef. One weekend I woke up early to treat her to breakfast before she could make it for me. But my gesture only made her fret and no amount of assurances could calm her. She was very insistent that she had to be the one to make meals for me, not the other way around. I'm not sure where she got that from. I don't remember selecting a will be a flawless 80s housewife in my preferences. Maybe she picked it up from the TV since she liked to watch a lot of older sitcoms. Nothing really unusual happened, to be perfectly honest. My phone battery stopped holding a charge. I had more of an appetite. Probably because her cooking was so nice. And I was a little more tired most days. Though I was also working a lot harder during the day so that I could be home at a reasonable time in the evenings. However, as we were settling in for dinner after work on Friday, there was a rather intrusive knock on the door. Begrudgingly, I got up to answer it. I really just wanted to eat and here was someone interrupting my meal. As it turned out, it was Braden. He pushed past me into the house with a, Yo, I haven't seen you for ages. Didn't you get any of my messages? Where have you been and... What's the smell? He asked, his lip curling in disgust. Feigning disgust, that is, I'm sure. 
as the only smell that filled my house at the time was my wife's cooking. Confused, I shook my head. I've been working and I didn't get any messages, I told him and then hesitated. Oh, actually I got one. Someone's missing? I asked, following after him as he seemed to be trying to locate the source of whatever he was smelling. Yeah, man, it's Zoe. She's missing. Her family said they've been trying to call you. Didn't you get their messages? He asked, looking at me like I was crazy. Who's Zoe? I queried, confused. Ha <laughs> ha, funny, you know Zoe, your recently ex-girlfriend. He reminded me, and then it clicked. Like a small piece of a puzzle I'd been missing, it came back to me. Oh, right, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been so busy, I, I haven't gotten any messages, I've... I stopped as Braden interrupted me suddenly. Yo, who the hell is this? He shrieked, recoiling from the kitchen, startled. It took me a second to realize that he had found my wife. Oh, Brayden, meet Alice, my wife. I informed him as he stared at her, dumbfounded. A pleasure to meet you. Alice paused to smile as she greeted him. She was dutifully covering our dinner plates with tinfoil to preserve them, knowing the food would get cold as Brayden and I spoke. There was a long moment where he just didn't say anything. He paced back and forth a moment, casting glances at Alice, then myself, before finally throwing up his arms and asking, When did you get married exactly? Cause I don't remember no wedding. I realized then that I hadn't mentioned anything to him or explained anything. It hadn't even occurred to me that I had to. It felt to me like Alice had always been a part of my life and I struggled to remember that she'd only recently arrived. Okay, yeah, uh, you're gonna love this. Remember when we joked about buying a wife? Well, I got an email advertising wives and I clicked on it and... I gestured to my wife. She arrived, marriage papers included. All I had to do was sign them. In my explanation, of course, I left out the whole brood in my basement part. He paused again. Hold up, you mean to say that you clicked on some dodgy email, ordered a waifu online, and this is what you got? Yeah, I mean, it was more involved than that, but yeah, that's basically it. I agreed with a nonchalant shrug, though he didn't seem reassured at all. You gotta get rid of it. Th that, that thing ain't right. She looks like Zoe and she's missing. That's a big fat no, brother. He warned, shaking his head at me and backing away from Alice. His reaction, I thought, was unreasonable. I have to get rid of it and that thing isn't right. Who did he think he was talking about? Alice was a person with rights and feelings, and I wasn't going to put up with that kind of rudeness towards my wife. I asked him to leave, telling him as he went that he wasn't welcome back until he apologized. He didn't seem too fussed. I'm telling you, it ain't right. Take her to the police or something. Drop her off somewhere. Ain't nothing good that comes out of scam emails. He ranted on his way to the door. I'd be watching what she's feeding you. You look a little thin too, he added. Seriously, it's not funny. Was all that I said in return through my teeth. I was angry. Unbelievably angry. I had never before been so angry. Part of me genuinely wanted to kill him as I slammed the door shut behind him. Where has all that anger even come from? It, it wasn't like me. Alice and I made love for the first time that night. Something about all the strong emotions put me in the mood and it seemed like she just fell out of her clothes. I will mention, since I'm sure that some of you are morbidly interested, 
that she was amazing in the sheets. I won't go into too much detail except to say that she did things in ways that I had never experienced before, and it was without a doubt the best sex I've ever had. In the days following, I heard nothing else from Braden. It seemed like he was unwilling to apologize, and I brushed it off with a whatever dude kind of attitude about it. I also got a new phone, since the old one was all but useless if I was missing messages. But soon I noticed that it too seemed to have a battery issue, so I took it back for a service. They told me at the store that it was going to take a day or two to send it away and sort it out. So I'd be without a phone until then. That didn't really bother me though, as I sat down for lunch the next day. I did feel a stab of regret about it, as it meant that I wouldn't get the usual hope you're having a good day text from Alice. Thinking of Alice and my phone naturally led my thoughts to stray to replaying what Brayden had said to me. I'd be watching what she's feeding you. I'm not exactly sure why that came to me just as I was about to take a bite of the sandwich, the one that Alice had prepared for me, but it did and I found myself eyeballing the sandwich suspiciously. It seemed fine, just your standard lettuce and chicken between two slices of whole-grained bread with mayonnaise. Nothing obviously harmful. So, I can't exactly explain why I threw it into the small trash can beside my desk and instead ordered food from a little stand across the street. As I ate my not-wife-prepared food, I felt a strange kind of feeling. It made me feel sick to eat it and I realized that I was all but inhaling it. Why was I suddenly so hungry? I mean, I was more often than not hungry these days, but this, this was different. I was eating like a starving dog. Because of this, I picked up some of the takeaway on my way after work and I ate it before I got home. When I arrived home, however, I instantly felt guilty. Alice had dinner ready on the table for me. I apologized profusely, telling her that I just felt so full from her sandwich that I didn't need anything else and I went to bed early. She didn't join me right away as she usually would have. I assumed that it was because I made her mad by refusing dinner. And when she did come up, I could feel her glaring daggers at the back of my head. In the morning, I got up and I left early without having breakfast, and I went straight to the store to see if my phone was repaired. I doubted that it would be, I just wanted to get out of the house really. Though I was surprised to learn that it was in fact ready to go. The guy at the store handed it back to me without really saying anything. Just that it was fixed, so I asked what had been wrong with it. He hesitated for a moment, trying to decide how to best broach the subject. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. The battery just needed to be charged. He said carefully. I could tell that he was doing his best not to rightly call me an imbecile for not knowing how to charge my own phone. Needless to say, this confused me. I had put my phone on the charger every night. I had checked that the switch was on. I had done all the right things. And yet, each morning when I woke up, I would only have 5 or 6% battery. A wave of nausea swept over me as I considered that maybe, just maybe, Alice was unplugging it after I went to sleep and plugging it in again shortly before I woke up each morning. Looking at the phone, I saw that I had a decent amount of unread text and voicemails, and that they were all recent, with the oldest one being from just after I had dropped off my phone for repairs. Had Alice been deleting my messages? Were these ones only here now because she hadn't had access to my phone? This paranoia swirled in my head every second for the rest of the day. At work, I listened to a couple of voicemails. One in particular stood out. It was from Braden. 
Hey man, look, I'm sorry about the other day. I'm really happy for you. I just... I don't know, man. She freaks me out. Her eyes are cold like a shark. And the way she looks like Zoe. I mean, I know you got a type, bro, but isn't it just a... just a little weird how she shows up all looking like Zoe and all just when Zoe goes missing? Anyway, that's... that's all I gotta say. We'll talk soon, yeah? I, I said I was sorry. Um, call me when you get a chance. Bye, bro. I didn't call him back, but his message certainly stayed with me. It made me remember the discarded sandwich from the day before. Curious, I leant over my desk and I checked its position in the bin. And, to my horror, I saw that it was growing unnaturally pink tendrils that pulsed as they struggled to haul themselves out of the trash. Disturbed, I drove home in silence with my thoughts. And, by the time I pulled into the driveway, I had decided that I was going to confront my wife. She could speak and reason. Surely we could talk this through. Get it sorted out. Apparently, she had come to the same conclusion as I had because when I walked through the door, she was waiting for me in the lounge room with her arms folded and there was no dinner on the table. The universal sign of a pissed off wife. You left today without breakfast, without even saying goodbye. She began immediately. Okay, yes, I agreed, but before I could continue, she did. All you have to say is okay, yes? She yelled, offended. And as she took in another breath to yell, I took my chance. You've been taking my phone off the charger and deleting my messages. And I don't even know what you're feeding me. I blurted out without any tact whatsoever. This caused her to pause. Her mouth snapped shut, and she stared at me unblinkingly, so I continued. What are you? I asked with dry lips. Where did you come from, and why do you look like Zoe? In response, she now smiled. She smiled a smile that grew. It spread slowly across her perfectly red lips until her teeth were showing, and then it stretched out impossibly wider. I heard the skin on either side of her lips tear as her head tilted back at a right angle, and her jaw began to open impossibly wide, revealing the inside of her mouth to be lined with rows of curved teeth leading down into the black abyss of her throat. From her back, her spine seemed to crack outward, breaking the skin and allowing malnourished arms covered with slimy red fluid to push violently out through her shirt. Some men might imagine that the worst part about confronting their wives would be the possibility that she could leave them, for me, the worst part was watching her eyes bulge and split into more eyes like a rapidly dividing cell. I stood, unable to move, as she transformed from the beautiful Alice into this thing, and once it was done, she seemed to turn to me, her multiple eyes all somehow focusing on me. If balls can shrink, mine did in that moment. Are you sorry now, Jake? My wife demanded in a mocking tone. Her voice no longer sweet, but deep and raspy. I tried to answer her, but my mouth was too dry to form words. Around me, I noticed that the walls of my home were covered in fleshy webs, I understood then that she was a parasite grown from a putrid recipe, and finally I was able to speak. Yes, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. 
I whispered, and this time I knew what I was apologizing for. I was apologizing for ordering her online, for growing her in my basement, for ever daring to have raised my voice to her. There was an agonizingly long moment before the word came to me. (sighs) She purred low and long, her form now clicking back into place with a sickening set of cracks and snaps to return to the woman I had become accustomed to seeing. You will be a husband to me. I will look like Zoe, because she was your optimum match, and her nutrients feed me well. She now answered my questions politely as her tattered clothes reminded me of what she could become if I displeased her. Right, right, yeah, that, that makes sense. I agreed, unsure of what else to do. My mind couldn't quite accept that I may have poured my ex's bones into a broth of whatever else to make this thing that now stood before me. Oh, and Jake, if you had a problem with my cooking, you only had to say so. She said pleasantly with a smile that made me flinch. I'll see what I can do to change it. Marriage is hard. As it stands, I have four years, ten months, and two weeks of my marriage contract left. And she wants children. All I can say is that I am truly sorry. Sorry.